directors Thomas Hakim and Julian Graf, the editor and DOP Ranavir Das, and the director Payal Kapadia. It's quite a small crew, so we, we know you collaborate quite strongly, so it's wonderful to have all four of you here on the stage. Alors, vous avez travaillé avec une équipe, une petite équipe, et donc c'est en très étroite collaboration, donc c'est vraiment bien de vous avoir tous ici. Congratulations on the film. It's an incredible film in its own right, also as a first feature, and as it's your first time in the Kanzan, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how this film came to be. I understand you're working on another uh, fiction project, but then this one sort of came to the fore last year. Alors bravo hein, pour ce film et puis pour euh, un premier long métrage. Donc quel est le point de départ du film Je crois comprendre que vous travaillez sur un projet de fiction quand ce film est arrivé euh, pour vous. Riku and I work very closely together, and we'd been shooting this film since 2017 with no real plan. We just kept shooting as things were happening around us, and we had friends who were shooting, and they had like extra footage, and they were like, okay, you're doing this, why don't you take some of our footage? So we had this growing large archive of footage over many, many years. And in the meanwhile, I was writing my first uh, feature film with uh, the same producers. And they were like, okay, if you're making a fiction feature and it's your first film, it's going to take a while to find funding. Uh, so is there something else you're working on? And I was like, yeah, I have this huge archive of footage and I'm we're trying to find a film in it. And they came on board because I think they agreed with the, what we were trying to do with the film. And that's when we sort of really started working on it and editing it together. Uh, and even the footage that we'd shot over the years, it became almost like found footage because I think what happens, even if you shot it yourself, documentary footage, sometimes as time passes, you start looking at it as, you know, as, as found footage as well. So it became like, um, this huge archive, a growing archive, archive of things that we had shot, at our friends had shot, things from the internet, random 8mm footage, and it became like this huge, huge, well, not just one, many hard disks of footage that we sort of started uh, finding a narrative to address. Alors oui, euh, on travaillait euh, déjà avec cette équipe euh, étroitement ensemble euh, et pendant ce temps-là, on, 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 on tournait en fait, des images euh, de ce qui se passait mais sans, euh, sans avoir d'idées vraiment précises en tête euh, et, et en fait, d'autres amis aussi euh, avaient tourné des images, des événements qui se déroulaient autour de nous et ont décidé de nous donner ces images donc on, on s'est mis à avoir comme ça une, à avoir une banque d'images assez riche euh, et comme j'étais en train d'écrire un film de fiction les, mes producteurs à l'époque m'ont dit mais que pour produire et réaliser un film de fiction, ça allait prendre beaucoup, beaucoup de temps. Ils m'ont demandé si j'avais autre chose en réserve, un autre projet. Et euh, quand je leur ai montré ces images, ils ont tout de suite euh, été d'accord avec euh, ce que je voulais essayer de dire dans le film. Et donc, ils ont été d'accord pour produire ce projet. Et puis, euh, à mesure qu'on tourne des images soi-même euh, et que le temps passe, où finalement, ces images, elles commencent à ressembler à des images d'archives qu'on pourrait trouver euh, dans d'autres euh, centres, enfin, des réserves d'images de, de, d'archives. Euh, et donc, euh, on, a, on y a ajouté aussi des tas d'autres images, notamment des images sur Internet, et c'est là qu'a commencé à se construire un récit. And at the level of the image, it is so textual. There are so many different types of images. You mentioned footage that had come to you. There is also like some sort of archival footage, and then there is the footage you shot, Rigu, as DOP. How did you decide what you would shoot? Was it sort of looking at already? what you had and you wanted to fill in the gaps or how did you decide what would end up in the film as archival or newly shot footage 
Alors, euh, effectivement, l'image est très riche en, en textures différentes euh, et on, on voit qu'il y a des images archives et puis il y a vos images à vous. Euh, en tant que chef opérateur du film, comment avez-vous décidé d'articuler les deux Est-ce que vous avez euh, rempli un petit peu les blancs avec euh, ce que vous aviez, vous, tourné en image, euh, et, et avec les images d'archives ou l'inverse Dites-nous un petit peu. Uh, I think uh, when we were first shooting, we didn't really, we were just shooting life around us. So, uh, it was just generally life on campus in the university and other such things. And But as the narrative started to evolve and uh, we got more footage from other people as well, I, I think then we started looking at more specific protests to shoot and things like that. And in terms of how we put it in the film, I, I, again, like I, the narrative kind of formed Uh, after we shot a lot of the footage. So uh, depending on how we were uh, kind of formulating how to move forward, we were just picking what we had. It made sense, I guess. And, uh, that's how we selected things. I'm just going to translate, sorry. Um, oui, donc en fait, tout ce qu'on a fait au départ, c'est filmer la vie autour de nous, de ce qui se passait sur notre campus. Et euh, donc, le, le, notre récit, il a évolué euh, avec aussi les images des autres qu'on a recueillies. Euh, et en fonction de ça, donc on a avancé au fur et à mesure en, en allant filmer d'autres manifestations. Et puis voilà, le récit a pris forme au fur et à mesure comme ça. Et, euh, et, et donc, en fonction de la formulation que l'on voulait continuer à donner à ce déroulement, on a, on a, on a effectivement rempli les blancs tourner d'autres images. Yeah, I think it was more the opposite way. Like we had already shot a lot, and then we had to uh, find the narrative to hold this entire body of footage together. So we worked in this reverse way. Alors oui, en fait, euh, on avait déjà énormément tourné d'images, et donc il a fallu trouver le récit pour articuler tout cela ensemble. And can you talk, the film is framed in the beginning by these letters and it was sort of set up like they were found um, on, on, on campus. Can you tell us about your relationship to these letters? How did they, how did you come across them? They're attributed to someone called Elle. Did you ever meet Elle at any point? Does she remain a mystery? Alors, le, le film s'articule notamment autour de ces lettres que vous avez trouvées sur le campus. Quelle est votre relation à ces lettres et à cet auteur euh, Comment l'avez-vous trouvé Avez-vous trouvé les lettres et l'auteur, qui, qui s'appelle Elle, l'avez-vous rencontré um, So, initially, when we started shooting the film, we were shooting our friends. And we were talking a lot about matters of love and the impossibility in certain relationships because in India it's, it's difficult uh, to be together because of caste differences, of religious differences. So this is what we were basically documenting and we realized that, you know, talking about young people in India cannot be done without talking about this, about discrimination in this way. So this is what we had started shooting uh, in the beginning uh, and it was, uh, so we decided that to use Uh, all this material that we had researched and collected, and also along with my writer Himanshu, we began to think that this uh, kind of fictional narrative uh, would be taken from all those stories that we had already documented, and that would be a way to approach um, all, the uh, all the protests that we had shot. And although that was the beginning, <coughs> it became kind of like the way to approach all this material because we felt that if we were talking about politics, it was impossible to not talk about the society that we live in and, that, um, and, and the truth of like everyday life of a young person in the country. So the letters were, were a way to address that. Alors, uh, donc au départ, ce qu'on a tourné avec nos, avec nos amis, les images, tourné autour des questions d'amour et de l'impossibilité parfois pour deux personnes d'être ensemble pour des questions de caste et de religion. Et pour moi, on ne pouvait pas euh, parler des jeunes en Inde sans parler de cette question de, de discrimination. Et donc, on a utilisé tout ce matériau qu'on avait collecté et euh, ce, pour ce, cette espèce de petit récit euh, fictionnel qui, qui, qui se, se dégageait, euh, on a, on a, on a, qui se dégageait à partir de pas mal d'histoires hein, qu'on avait recueillies autour de nous, euh, nous a permis ensuite de, 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 
d'agréger dessus le, le, voilà, la question des manifestations. Et, et on ne peut pas non plus parler de la politique euh, sans parler de notre société et de la vie des jeunes au jour le jour. And you mentioned the interplay of this sort of fiction and um, documentary, but also there's a very striking interplay or almost dialectic between the sound and the image. Um, for instance, in the beginning, we see people dancing quite manically, but the sound is, there's almost no sound. It's so intense. I'm wondering if you can talk about, um, I guess, both Rigo, the editor, and, and Payal, um, How did you decide to put which text with which image? And was that in the edit, or was that something you had thought about previously? Alors, vous travaillez également euh, sur un, un, un mélange entre le son et l'image très particulier. Euh, il y a beaucoup aussi de silence dans le film. Comment avez-vous décidé quel texte allez vous allez, euh, vous alliez mettre avec quelle image? Est-ce que ça s'est joué au montage ou avant cela? This film is truly experimental in that sense as well. There was a lot of uh, there was a lot of trial and error involved. We wrote a lot of letters uh, with my writer and with all the all the material that we had from the stories that we had. We put together all these letters, and they were a lot more than there are in the film. And it was. Um, It was just like literally experimenting and putting images and sound and uh, we, we, we did the sound as well while editing uh, along with it because it was such an important part of the film to approach it through sound. So um, yeah, it took a really long time to arrive at this finally with the large body of writing and sounds and images that we had. And um, so yeah, I think it was Because of the lockdown as well, we had this time to both of us, we live together as well, which is nice, so that we can, you know, <laughs> keep trying things every day, wake up every morning, look at the rushes and see what we can make out of it. So it was literally that just everyday process of editing and working. And, you know, it's like uh, you don't know what this sculpture is and you go at it and maybe you see a little ear or an eye or a face somewhere. And that's, I guess, how this film, um, which had a large rock that finally found some shape. Euh, eh bien, ce film est expérimental à plusieurs niveaux et donc pour ça aussi, en fait, on avait écrit beaucoup de lettres au départ en fonction de ce qu'on avait entendu autour de nous et au départ, il y en avait beaucoup plus que cela. Euh, et le son, le travail sur le son s'est fait vraiment au montage euh, et on a voulu tout, pour que tout se, tout se mette en place. Ça a été extrêmement long pour en arriver là, pour arriver à cet ensemble. Euh, et euh, il se trouve que le confinement nous a laissé euh, du temps pour travailler ça. Comme on vit ensemble également dans la vie, c'était assez pratique, parce qu'au quotidien, on a pu retravailler les choses, ajuster. C'était un peu comme une sculpture, on part d'un rocher, on ne sait pas exactement ce que ça va donner à la fin, mais petit à petit, on voit se dégager une forme, un œil, et voilà, c'est exactement comme ça qu'on a procédé. And the film is um, largely about or situated in, in India's main film and television school, which I imagine is that where you went, to, you both went to school. And... Um, Can you talk about how you chose to depict it aesthetically? There's something very ghostly about the images. Not only are they in black and white and um, shot on 16 millimeter, I imagine, but how did you render the images of your time there? Is that because that's how your memory works of your time? Could you talk about that? Alors, euh, évidemment, il y a beaucoup d'images qui sont tournées dans votre école de cinéma. Euh, C'est un rendu assez fantomatique, hein, euh, avec le noir et blanc, le 16 mm. Euh, comment euh, est-ce que, est -ce que est, du coup, ça, ça retranscrit votre souvenir de cette période-là Je pense que c'est aussi un hommage au like, cinéma, in a sense, parce que la school où nous allions, nous avons eu à voir beaucoup de films, parce que nous avions le National Film Archive, et nous avons eu à voir beaucoup de films de la Soviet Union. Uh, from the Czech Republic. So we, we sort of grew up watching all these films and they were really um, inspiring to us. And so it was kind of uh, the materiality of the film was something that, you know, we also wanted to have that sense of the history of cinema and a sort of nostalgia 
but not a nostalgia for the past because in no way do we think that the past was better. I think that what we were trying to do was to get a nostalgia for the present, for this time that we live in, which is although it's difficult and it's, it's not just in India, but all over the world, we are at a moment uh, which is crucial and difficult for everyone, but it's also important that we go through it. And so it's, and, and, and perhaps this will bring something that will, that, that's why I have some hope as well. But so the sense of this nostalgia for the present is what, what we wanted to, to get through the, the image as well, um, which is a kind of a contradiction as well, but um, it, was, it was what excited us to do. And yeah, of course, it refers to all the films that we watched and been inspired by in the history of cinema. Alors c'était avant tout un hommage au cinéma. Dans notre école, on a vu énormément de films parce qu'on avait accès aux archives nationales du film. On avait beaucoup de films de l'époque soviétique, de République tchèque. On a été vraiment biberonné à toute cette histoire du cinéma. Ça nous a beaucoup inspiré. Et du coup, ça nous a donné envie de créer un film qui soit empreint de nostalgie, mais pas une nostalgie du passé, euh, plutôt une nostalgie du présent, c'est-à-dire que ce qu'on vit aujourd'hui, euh, non seulement en Inde, mais dans le monde entier, euh, qui est à un moment difficile, euh, reste quelque chose d'important qu'on doit traverser euh, avec l'espoir que ça apporte euh, prochainement le progrès. Donc, d'où cette idée un petit peu paradoxale de nostalgie du présent. And that's why it's really important that we are at Kanzen because we, we studied the festival in film school and you know what, what it meant at the time. So it was really something that I thought was real privilege to be here with this film, which because it was cinema that kind of led me to understand politics. And I think this is what I'm trying, we are trying to bring back to cinema with this film. So yeah, that's just wanted to add that as well. Et euh, évidemment, il y a aussi un hommage au cinéma français auquel on fait référence dans le film. C'est pour ça que c'est si important pour nous d'être ici à la quinzaine. Euh, c'est un festival que l'on étudie euh, à notre école de cinéma avec toute la symbolique que ce festival, euh, que, ce, que, cette, que ce, cette sélection euh, revêt. Euh, donc pour nous, c'est un vrai privilège. C'est vraiment euh, ce, ce festival, ces, ces problématiques qui m'ont amené à comprendre euh, que la politique devait être ramenée euh, dans le cinéma. Just to end on your ending, which is so beautiful and, and moving, um, it's great to talk about that because um, I, I feel like a lot of the films in the Kanzan this year sort of focus on youth, in, as you say, going through difficult times, but also there's hope. And I felt with the music and the dancing in your ending, it does end on a note of hope, even though we just hear about you know, the very difficult situation. Can, can you talk about why you chose to end the film with the, the dancing? Alors, pour euh, parler de cette fin très émouvante, euh, comme dans énormément de films de la quinzaine, où on, on parle de la jeunesse qui traverse des moments difficiles, vous avez choisi de terminer sur une note d'espoir avec cette danse. Pourquoi Je pense que la danse est un peu un hommage à ce que les universités publiques en in Inde nous proposent. And that's freedom. I, I think that it is the public education system, universities, art schools, film schools that are subsidized by the government that allows people to access education and to be free from the society that has bound them. And I think that's what the dance represents. It's, it's the university space that is truly uh, equal and freeing and the possibility of, of, of an equal society can only come with access to education. And I think that's, that's, that's the argument of the film as well. And I think the dance is kind of a representation of that freedom that we've all experienced in our public universities. And because, you know, it, India is a very um, unequal society and there's people for generations have been denied access to education. Uh, whether it's through caste or class or you know the affordability of of the education so the public university space makes sure that we have people from all strata of society who can come and maybe they 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 come from more conservative backgrounds or more liberal backgrounds but here we are all 
able to sort of express ourselves and be truly um, free to express our views, to have political discourse, to have discussion, to argue with each other, but also dance. And that's important too, I think. So. <laughs> Pour moi, la danse est un, est un hommage à ce que les universités publiques offrent à la jeunesse indienne, c'est-à-dire un espace de liberté. Donc, ces institutions qui sont financées par le gouvernement donnent un accès à l'éducation à tous. Et donc, la danse représente cette, cette égalité, cette liberté, cette possibilité d'avoir une société égalitaire. Donc c'est la liberté que nous, on a connue quand on était à l'université. L'Inde étant traditionnellement une société extrêmement inégalitaire, depuis des générations, on a nié, on a, on a refusé l'accès à tout un tas de personnes à, à l'éducation. Et donc les universités, elles au moins, elles s'assurent que toutes les couches de la société sont représentées, que tout le monde puisse s'exprimer, tout le monde puisse exprimer son point de vue. Et puis on peut aussi voilà, débattre, mais aussi danser. Well, thank you very much. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. But thank you so much to the whole team. Congratulations, and thank you for sticking around.